Here are the contents of the video. Click on a portion or let the video run. Here are some brief notes for the Junkers 87 D3. You can pause the video here to look at them in more detail. As always in the multi-seat aircraft, we'll look at the rear gunner position first. One thing you'll note with the Stuka is that you can reload the guns, but you can't actually move them around unless the canopy is shut. So we shut the canopy, then we press T to pick up the machine guns, move around with the mouse. Shift T will bring up the iron sights, then we can left click to fire. Now we'll go back to the cockpit, press Ctrl C, and now we'll go through the Junkers 87 cockpit. First off on our left, we have the dive brakes. So pulling back extends the dive brakes. and pushing it forward retracts the dive brakes. And next to our dive brakes we have the flaps. These come in two stages. The first stage is most of the deployment and then the second stage is a little bit extra. Since the flaps are only two stages and most of it is deployed in the first stage, I treat it like the IL-2 and only deploy my flaps once I'm on final. Just in front of the flaps we have the rudder and the elevator trim. Now we come up to the throttle Pushing forward is increasing manifold pressure and pulling it back is decreasing. Next to the throttle we control our RPMs. Pushing forward increases RPM and pulling it back will decrease RPM. That switch on the left controls the famous siren. And finally on the left we have the ammunition counters. Now let's check out the front panel because there's a lot here. Starting at the top left we have the water radiator controls open and close. And then on the far right we have the indicator for that. When the needle is down water radiator is open and the needle up is closed. Back to the left we have the clock, then we have the compass and the standard fuel gauge in yellow. Above that we have the contact altimeter which will be explained in more detail in the dive bombing video. Above that we have our standard altimeter. Above there we have the supercharger. Pull it out for stage one and push it in for the second stage. Then we have a repeater compass under that we have the turn and bank indicator. Then we have the radio homing indicator used for navigation. Now we have a split gauge of fuel and oil pressure. To the right of that we have the oil temperature. And then we have the water temperature. Moving back up the panel we have the vertical speed indicator. The airspeed indicator. The tachometer. And lastly the manifold pressure. With most of that out of the way, we'll look underneath. And first thing you'll see is the viewing window. This is what you use during bombing. And we have the bomb arming panel. And off to the right is the oil radiator. Pulling it down is opening it, and pulling it up is closing it. Now on our right hand side, we have the tail wheel control. Pulling it forward is unlocking it, and pulling it back is locking it. Now we've gone over the important stuff in the cockpit, we'll look at the engine start. It's pretty straightforward starting the Stuka. Have the throttle cracked a little bit, RPM control fully back, have the water radiator and the oil radiator both closed, and then you just press E to start the engine. Now the engine started, we do our preparations for taxi, putting our RPM all the way forward. Opening the oil radiator and we'll keep the water radiator shut for now. And we unlock the tail wheel. Clear our obstructions to the front, increase throttle and start taxiing. As usual we skip the taxi sequence and go to the takeoff. Coming onto the runway for takeoff, we've had the tail wheel unlocked during taxi, so now we lock it. Then we roll forward the extra few feet to ensure the tail wheel is straight. Now I'll apply the brakes and go through the takeoff checklist. The tail wheel is already locked, we'll close the canopy, make sure RPM control is all the way forward, ensure both radiators are fully open, it's a water radiator, oil radiator is open, and as always for the takeoff, gradually increase the throttle to maximum, and in the Junkers you're going to be rotating at about 170 km an hour. Alright, so we'll start increasing the throttle. It's going to be a little bit of uh, pull to the left, so you're going to be countering that with right rudder. As you start building up on the airspeed, you can push forward on the stick a little bit to bring the tail wheel off the ground. 
and just holding the attitude nice and steady, it'll take off on its own. Note that this takeoff is without a bomb load, so if you were taking off with bombs, your takeoff run is going to be a bit longer, but the same principles apply. So now we're established on climbs at circuit height. Now you don't want to overstress the engine, so we're going to reduce manifold pressure, and then we reduce RPM. Then we'll initiate a turn onto the circuit, and we'll go through the landing checklist. So as we come on downwind, we're going to have an RPM of about 2000 with a manifold pressure of 0.6. We're going to close the water radiator because we're running at reduced throttle. We're going to turn on base when the runway is 45 degrees between the wing and the tail. Then we'll descend at about 150 meters a minute. We'll turn on finals required and that's when we'll deploy our flaps. Usually you only need the first stage, but you can deploy the second if you want. And this will allow us to have a good approach at about 190 to 200 kilometers an hour and then we'll be touching down at 150. So we're coming on downwind, established a circuit altitude, running a reduced power, 2000 RPM, 0.6 atmospheres to help bring our speed down. So now we'll close the water radiator. This is to help keep the temperature high at a low power setting. So now we look out on the left hand side, check the runway position, so the runway looks like it's in a good position, so we continue on this heading on downwind. Then we'll do our best to maintain altitude by changing our pitch at this lower power setting. This will help lower our speed in the circuit. So now that we're approaching the end of downwind, we're going to be periodically checking over our left shoulder, making sure the runway is still in position. And we'll be wanting to keep an eye out for when the runway is at 45 degrees between the wing and the tail, and that's when we'll turn on base. Another quick check, that looks pretty good. So now we'll turn on base and we'll start our descent. As we're coming on base, uh, we'll think about what happens on final when we drop the flaps. There's going to be quite a dramatic change in the pitch, so you're going to have to counter this using the stick and then you can use trim to help relieve that stick pressure. Okay, so we're almost ready to turn on final, so we'll check runway position and we can start banking over to the left and bring ourselves on to final approach. Okay, so wings level, deploy the flaps, cut the throttle, and you'll be coming in at approach at about 190 to 200 kilometers an hour. As you probably noticed, I've leaned left so I can see the runway better because otherwise it can be obstructed by the gun sight. Normally you adjust your final approach with pitch and throttle, but now, because I'm at idle throttle, all I've got available to me is pitch. So I'm adjusting my pitch to maintain a steady approach speed. Okay, we're coming over the runway, so now we can start flattening out a bit, bring our speed down further, and we'll flare, and then we'll be touching down at 150 kilometers per hour. Now that we touch down, apply full back pressure, then start applying brakes, and retract the flaps and open the canopy and taxi off the runway. That's the Junkers 87 D3 familiarization video. If you like the video you can let me know in the comments and you can also hit subscribe to see more videos in the future.